Here we go. Now it's being recorded. So uh, the uh, energy yielding oxidation of organic molecules in the in the presence of oxygen, mitochondria needs oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, pyruvate enters the mitochondrion and air cardiac cells where the oxidation of glucose is completed. Breakdown of glucose molecules is completed in mitochondria. You started out with glucose here, and then it breaks down to pyruvate in cytoplasm, and then the pyruvate comes into mitochondria. That's what you're going to talk about next. Pyruvate is going to come to mitochondria, and pyruvate breaks down. Oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Before the citric acid cycle can begin, pyruvate must be converted to acetyl-CoA. Uh, and I will show you the picture uh, which links uh, glycolysis to citric acid cycle. This step is carried out by a uh, multi-enzyme complex that catalyzes three reactions. You don't have to know this multi-enzyme reaction here but when I was a student for some of my advanced classes, uh, uh, senior year or graduate students, uh, when I was in graduate school getting my master or PhD, then I had to study those. You don't have to, the multi-enzyme complex. Here we go. Glycolysis occurred in cytoplasm. This is cytoplasm. And now, after glycolysis, pyruvate goes to mitochondria, and pyruvate goes through Krebs cycle, or citric acid cycle, or tricarboxylic acid cycle, three names for it. And then, when citric acid cycle occur, then oxidative phosphorylation electron transport chain will occur. So, here it is. Pyruvate, how many carbons pyruvate has? Oh, how many? Three. 500? Oh, three. I'm sorry, three. Pyruvate has three carbons. So what happens, transport proteins on the mitochondria, this is the mitochondria, so transport protein will transport this into mitochondria, however, this is converted into acetyl-CoA. How many carbon acetyl-CoA has? Two. Two. Acetyl-CoA has two carbon. And then what happens, what do you think happens to the, that carbon? What do you think is going to happen? as a carbon dioxide, you exhale it. Is that right? You exhale this carbon dioxide. The glucose you had this morning with mashed potato. It's converted first to pyruvate, then pyruvate goes into mitochondria, and mitochondria becomes acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA has two carbon, what happens to that Third carbon, right? Glucose had six carbon, right? You remember that. Broke down to two pyruvates. Here is three carbon, and here is a three carbon. Am I making some sense? Oops, sorry. Three carbon and three carbon. Something like that. Okay, so now I'm talking about one of those three carbons. There are two of them here. I'm talking about one of those pyruvates right here. So pyruvate inside of mitochondria becomes acetyl-CoA. Uh, now, hang on to acetyl-CoA. What happens, another thing, NAD becomes NADH. When, you're tr when, when pyruvate is becoming, when pyruvate is becoming uh, acetyl-CoA, you also create one NADH. Do you make any ATP converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, huh? Based on the diagram, no, no. You know, the PowerPoints or me will not hide it, hide the ATP, and ask you, do are you making any ATP? No, just look at the diagram, say no, Amir. Based on this diagram, Amir, ATP is not being synthesized. ATP is not being made, am I right? Yeah. I will not hide it and say, oh, you're wrong. Here it is. See, it's there. No, it's not there. Okay, so the citric acid, uh, uh, what is the citric acid cycle? The citric acid cycle, also uh, called, known as Krebs cycle, completed the breakdown of pyruvate to carbon dioxide. The uh, cycle oxidizes organic fuel derived from pyruvate, generating one ATP, 
three NADH, and I will tell you where those will come in a minute, hang on, and one FADH per turn. This is, I hope, when I submitted the PowerPoints, this is the most recent one, you got this one. Do you have this one in your PowerPoint? Roughly, roughly, you know what that sign means, everybody? Roughly, almost, almost, one in ADH is equal to three ATP. And you will see that in a minute. How NADH is turned into ATP. 1FADH is equal to 1 ATP. And then 1 GTP, you will see that again. 1 GTP is equal to 1 ATP. Are you guys ready to go through Krebs cycle? It's not crap, it's Krebs. What's the name of the scientist? discovered this and he won a Nobel Prize for it. Really? He, of course, he discovered another cycle. He should have won two Nobel Prize for it because he discovered Krebs cycle and he also discovered uh, the nitrogen cycle. I can't, anyhow, he discovered two important things. But he got one Nobel Prize. That's okay. He got it once. He got, his name is in every textbook of biology. You open up a textbook in biology, his name is in I think that's good enough. Right? So let's go. Are you ready? Uh, pyruvate oxidation, pyruvate from glycolysis, two molecules per glucose. Of course, you have two molecules. You remember that? I talked about that. One glucose molecule gives you two pyruvate. And then, of course, these are, what are these circles indicate? What is that circle? Indicate of what? Carbon. Carbon, thank you. What would we do without you? I'm not talking about Reno. What would we do without you? Jerry, is that right? Then you probably like to go with Jerry. So you have three carbons. Mr. Mann said there are three carbons in here. The three carbons are the pyruvate. They didn't draw all of the hydrogens and oxygens attached to them. You all know what I'm talking about. So when you're studying these notes, these PowerPoints, you know what is going on. So this is pyruvate. It turns into acetyl-CoA. And how many carbon acetyl-CoA has? Two. Of course, you get one NADH from it. NAD becomes NADH. And then, of course, there's a CoA molecule. Uh, somewhere along the line in here, we said coenzymes are protein molecules. Here is one of them, CoA is a protein molecule attaches to these two carbons. And of course, one of these carbons become carbon dioxide. Then, to make the long story short, the acetyl-CoA goes through the cycle, and I will let you know what you have to know about this cycle. Okay, I will let you know. And it goes through the cycle, and eventually, all of these two carbons are lost as carbon dioxide. So all of the carbons you ate in mashed potato this morning, or cereal, what have you, all of that carbons you ate this morning, eventually, or in your drink, your, is it a shake or juice, whatever you had, yeah. eventually are going to come out as what? Carbon dioxide. Everything you ate is going to come out <coughs> as carbon dioxide. All of that mashed potato you had. All of that egg you had, all of that butter you put in your uh, toast, everything you had eventually is going to come out as carbon dioxide. Right here. This is the evidence of it. That's what Dr. Krebs did for us. Which I understand it. Right here. And of course, in the process, you are going to get 3 NADH, you are going to get 1 ATP. That's GTP, and you're going to get one FADH. So don't forget, don't leave home without that PowerPoint right there. Have you heard of, during, it was not during your time, it was during my time. Uh, they uh, commercialized a TV, that was during the time I used to watch TV when I was a student, I used to watch TV. Now I don't, I don't, I don't have one. Don't you feel sorry for me? We do have a TV, but it's not hooked up to any cable or antenna. Really? So we don't watch. But anyhow, Oscar was last night, wasn't it? Huh? Hmm. I don't even ask who won, what happened, what. 
I never get a chance to see it. Whatever movie you want, I don't get. Yeah. But anyhow, what I was going to say. Oh, they said don't leave home without American Express. It was commercial on TV on American Express. Don't leave home without it. Don't leave your home without your American Express. So do not leave home without knowing this one PowerPoint. So let's go over step by step what happens. Of course, you know these two molecules per glucose becomes acetyl CoA. How many molecules of acetyl CoA do you make? Does your cells make per glucose molecule? Two. Two. It makes two uh, acetyl CoA. And here we go again. Same thing. Okay, the citric acid cycle has eight steps. Each catalyzes by specific enzymes. The acetyl group of acetyl CoA joins uh, the cycle by combining the oxaloacetate, forming the citric. This portion of the cycle you must know. The oxaloacetate is combined with uh, acetate of the acetyl CoA to give you citrate. That portion of the cycle you must know. Okay. Uh, the next seven steps uh, decomposes the, cit uh, the citrate uh, back to oxaloacetate, making the pro uh, a, a cycle. NADH and FADH produced by the cycle relay the electrons extracted from food to the electron transport chain right here. So this is, the, this is what we are going to discuss right now, the citric acid cycle right here is a citric acid cycle. Here it is acetyl-CoA. It comes off, the CoA goes off, and then this is oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate, how many carbon does it have? Can you, in the back, uh, non vid can you count it for me in the back? You're sitting far back. How many carbon oxaloacetate has? Three. Oh. She said three. How many, Katrina, how many do you see in the back? Four. Oxaloacetate has four carbon. And then from, Acetate, acetyl CoA, how many carbon acetyl CoA has? Two. Those two combined with these four gives you citrate, and citrate has six carbon. What Dr. Heinz Krebs did? He made these carbons radioactive. These two, you see, they are red. You see, those two are red. Do you guys see that? He made them radioactive. Those two carbons were radioactive. And then he chased them. He chased these two carbons. That's what they call it in biology. There is a process. They call it labeling. L you label it most of the time with radioactive material. And you trace it. Tracing. Have you, you know... What they do with birds, they tag them on their neck or on their feet. They put a transmitter. You all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You've seen it on TV documentaries. And they follow the birds where because of the transmitter, they have the machine, they have the laptop nowadays, right? And then they follow where the birds go. First, they tag them on their ankle, on their feet. And then they, based on the transmitters they were sending, they know where the birds are migrating. You all know what I'm talking about. You've seen it on TV or documentary somewhere. Same thing here. Same thing here. He made them radioactive and he followed them and he saw where these carbons eventually ended up. The birds do not, they do not make the birds radioactive. You all know what I'm talking about. I'm saying they make he made it here radioactive and the next step citrate became isocitrate those two carbons were there isocitrate become became alpha ketoglutarate how many carbon iso, uh, isocitrate has can you count them for me oh huh? anybody you do have your six. six and then how many carbon alpha ketoglutarate has five what happens to that carbon Exhale. You're exhaling it right now as we speak. You're exhaling that carbon as carbon dioxide. Right here. So, alpha ketoglutarate becomes succinyl CoA. And of course, in the process of converting isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate, you're making NADH. 
when you're converting alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA, you're making NADH. Of course, there is carbon dioxide being lost. Succinyl-CoA becomes succinate. ATP is being synthesized. Succinyl-CoA becomes succinate. Succinate becomes fumarate. FADH is being synthesized. And how many carbons does it have? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Nothing happens. No carbon dioxide is being lost. These carbon dioxide that they were lost from the cycle, Dr. Krebs looked at it and they were not radioactive. They were not radioactive. So, uh, and here they are. He's following their radioactivity right here. Those carbons are there and eventually those carbons are here and here and finally uh, the fumarate becomes malate, malate becomes oxaloacetate, of course you have NADH is being formed. And the cycle goes on and on and on, eventually those carbon carbons, these carbons that they were radioactive, eventually are lost as carbon dioxide. So the cycle regenerates itself, the carbons within the cycle regenerate themselves. And uh, you're making NADH in an FADH2, an ATP, an NADH, in the process. What is it that you have to know for your exam? I know you're all worried, Amir, do we have to memorize all of this, all of this and that? No, just like your amino acids. Remember, you recognize your amino acids, you should know them. You have to recognize these intermediates of Krebs cycle. In a quiz question or exam question, I might ask you which one of the following is not an intermediate of Krebs cycle. Acetyl-CoA is that intermediate of Krebs cycle? No, it's not. Acetyl-CoA is not intermediate of Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle starts with isos with citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, back to oxaloacetate. These are intermediates of Krebs cycle. Is pyruvate intermediate of Krebs cycle? No. Is glucose intermediate of Krebs cycle? No. Is uh, lysine intermediate of Krebs cycle? No. So you should recognize these terms. And the only thing you should know about this cycle, another thing that you should know, it's in your PowerPoint, I wrote it down for you, oxaloacetate plus acetate, of course when acetyl-CoA loses its CoA, it's called acetate. It's called acetate. So oxaloacetate plus oxaloacetate plus acetate gives you citrate. That's another piece of information I want you to know. Now, where, uh, where NADHs are formed, where is ATP formed, all of that, don't worry. I don't want you to know. How many carbon uh, malate has, how many carbon fumarate has, how many carbon alpha ketoglutarate has, don't worry. You should know how many carbon oxaloacetate it has. Huh? Four. And with two carbons from acetate, which came from acetyl CoA, gives you six carbon, uh, which is citrate has six carbon. You should know citrate has also six carbon. This is it. This is Krebs cycle. And it happens where? Where does Krebs cycle occur? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. It happens in mitochondria. Okay, here are the steps. I'm not going to go over them. You already know them. What is chemosmosis? Okay, that's that's the next thing. So you, you, you remember we talked about this. This is glycolysis. Then pyruvate goes into mitochondria. In mitochondria, you have Krebs cycle, which you already studied it. The next step is right here, chemosmosis. Well, it's electron transport chain, which I will talk about that. But before chemosmosis, you know what osmosis means, right? 
osmosis, right? That word from O S M O S I S, osmosis. Okay, the following glycolysis and citric acid cycles, NAD. Uh, H and FADH uh, accounts for most of energy extracted from food. These two electron carriers do, uh, donate electrons to electron transport chain, which powers ATP synthesis via uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Ah, writing, writing, writing. The pathway of electrons are right here. I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to talk about it as soon as we, we are going to talk about that one. oxidative phosphorylation of ATP. Cytochromes, they are the molecules, I guess. Oh my God, I thought I'd get rid of a lot of these. ATP synthase, right here. Let's go over that. Okay, let's um, give me five minutes, guys, and I'll be right back, and then we'll go over this. If you want to look at your PowerPoints, uh, we will. I will come and uh, look at, uh, uh, if you want to review, I'll be back in five minutes. Take a break. Your break is now. Can we? Uh, Reno, you should be in charge of the camera phone. No, uh, I should.